My Fusion System, Fusing a Thousand Chickens at the Start Chapter 11, Thorn Vest and Storm Sword A total of 20 silver coins, 4 complete sets of armor, 5 swords and some jewelry. Watson fiddled with the stuff on the ground. They had all been left behind by Wesley and the others. The heavy armor and the one meter long thin sword were shining, a clear sign that it was made with high quality steel. After glancing at them, Watson looked at his brother, who was wearing cloth clothes and said, Big brother, these people all have armor on them. Why don't you have any? Do you have such superior strength that you wouldn't need any armor to defend your body? What do you mean by superior strength? I'm just a iron tier warrior. Do you think I wouldn't want to wear any armor? Each armor is worth 10 silver coins. I've worked under list for so long, and I've only saved 8 silver coins. Five of them were used to buy this weapon. Vincent smiled bitterly and pointed at the heavy sword in his hand. The heavy sword, which was as thick as a door, was not made of steel but black iron. Compared to steel, black iron was more brittle and easier to break. Unlike other people who had worked in the list manner for 10 to 20 years, he had only worked for a few years. Being able to save nearly 10 silver coins was all the result of his hard work. In that case, I'll make a suit of armor for you, big brother, Watson said after thinking for a while. It was a waste to put these armors here. He had the super fusion system which could fuse four sets of armor together and definitely increase its performance by ten times. You can make armor too. Vincent had a strange look in his eyes. Blacksmithing was a rare and respectable profession in the entire Holy Dragon Kingdom. When Vincent bought his huge sword, he had seen the process of blacksmithing with his own eyes. Those blacksmiths were all big and burly men. They used hot hammers and stuck tens of thousands, perhaps even hundreds of thousands of times, before they could forge a decent weapon. The process could be as short as a few days or as long as a few months. He did not expect his little brother, who had thin legs and arms, to also know how to forge. Aside from knowing magic, Watson was also a silver tier warrior. In addition, he knew how to forge too, despite only being ten years old. Where did he learn so many things? The weapons in this world were the same as the cultivation levels. They were also divided into iron, bronze, silver, and so on. The corresponding level of defensive equipment could withstand the attacks of the same level. For these professions, a handy weapon was enough to multiply their combat strength by several times. For example, just now, if Vincent had a bronze tier sword and a set of bronze tier armor, he would have been able to defeat Wesley and the others without Watson's help. Unfortunately, a bronze tier weapon was worth a hundred gold coins and he could not afford it. Don't worry, big brother. I only know a little about forging. I might not be able to forge anything decent, so please don't be so hard on me, Watson said modestly. Vincent heaved a sigh of relief instead. If Watson said that he could forge an excellent defensive tool, he really would call Watson a monster. Even if Watson was extraordinarily talented, it seemed that there were still some things that he could not do and immediately offered some words of comfort, it doesn't matter. These weapons belong to others anyway. It doesn't matter if they're broken. You'll need to use the forging table when you're forging, right? I know a few nearby blacksmiths. I'll bring you there when I have the time. Forging necessitated the use of a high-temperature furnace to melt the iron into molten iron. It also required a heavy hammer to remove impurities. Without that equipment, even the best blacksmiths would not be able to display their abilities. After hearing those words, Vincent no longer thought that Watson was proficient in forging. He only thought that his younger brother wanted to play. Father still doesn't know about Wesley's attempt to rob the Pentacolor fragrant chicken. I have to hurry back and inform him. Our defenses must strengthen during the next few days, and if it really doesn't work, we can hire two trustworthy people to prevent the Pentacolor fragrant chicken from being stolen again. Because of what had just happened, Vincent became very concerned about the Pentacolor fragrant chicken. After leaving a few words, he turned around and left. 
Seeing his big brother leave, Watson sat cross-legged on the ground. Other people needed a forging table to forge, but the superfusion system meant that he did not need to go through that much trouble. He could not explain to his big brother about the system though, so the first thing he would do was fuse the armor there and give it to his big brother after a period of time. Then, he could pretend that he had secretly found someone to forge it. At that moment, the attributes of several pieces of armor floated in front of his eyes. Iron tier armor, refined steel armor. Effect, able to withstand attacks from iron tier individuals. Master, do you wish to fuse the armor in front of you? Fuse. Watson nodded and the few pieces of armor in front of him immediately turned into white glow along with a whooshing sound. They collided together, then formed a vest covered completely with barbs. It then glowed with a thick bronze light. Fusion successful. Master has obtained bronze tier armor, thorn vest. Bronze tier armor, thorn vest. Effect, able to withstand the attacks of bronze tier individuals. Additional effect repels 50% of the opponent's attacks, weakening the effect of attacks that are above bronze tier. After sizing up the thorn vest, Watson put it on his back. He realized that it was a little big, so he wore it loosely. The hem of the vest could be used as a skirt for him. He picked up a thin sword from the ground and slashed it on his body. His current strength was more than a thousand caddies, so the strike was powerful and heavy, bringing with it a whistling wind. With a muffled bang, the thin sword bounced away, and causing Watson's arm to go numb. The thorn vest was not damaged at all, but on the contrary, a crack appeared on the thin sword. How strong! Watson's eyes lit up. This thin sword was also an iron tier weapon, but it was useless in the fact of the thorn vest. If he had that vest earlier, he would not even need to eat the phoenix egg produced by fusing all hundred eggs. He could just stand there and allow Wesley's group to attack. Retaliating was unnecessary for him to make those guards kneel. Watson touched the thorn vest fondly and took it off. Although the defensive equipment was good, he had already promised to make armor for his big brother. Moreover, the vest was too big. It was better to let his big brother with eight pack ABS wear it. After fusing the armor, Watson looked down and saw that there were five thin swords on the ground. Not one to let them go to waste, he fused them all. Fusion successful. Master has obtained a bronze tier weapon, storm sword. Bronze tier weapon, storm sword. Effect, capable of breaking through the defense of bronze tier individuals. Additional effect, when used, the blade will automatically compress the air, forming a sharp wind blade. The farthest attack can reach a range of 10 meters. On his second look of the five thin swords fused together, their size had more than doubled and it appeared to be a green longsword. Watson picked it up and waved it twice. A layer of flowing wind on the sword turned into a sharp blade, cutting through the air and leaving a crack on the ground. Watson could not help but smile when he saw that. The attack power of this sword was comparable to that of Wesley's. In other words, a weak person who obtained that sword could possess the same strength as Wesley. It was unsurprising then, that so many people were eager to get good weapons. After that, Watson fused the clothes and jewelry left behind by Wesley's group to obtain a dust-repelling clean clothes and an ethereal necklace that could soothe the mind. Unfortunately, they were both iron tier. He hung the necklace around his neck and was prepared to wear that loose robe as his pajamas. His family was so poor, and as the eight child, he had to understand the principles of thriftiness. Not far from him, outside the chicken farm. What did I see? Vincent hid behind the low fence and stared at Watson with his mouth agape. The armor disappeared and turned into a vest. The thin sword also turned into a bronze tier weapon. They're being forged into a weapon without a forging table. How did this happen? He had meant to leave, but suddenly remembered a question. He earlier saw Watson bringing out a hundred eggs, which suddenly disappeared and turned into a small ball. He wanted to ask how it was done, but he saw the scene before he could go back. Vincent felt that his worldview had collapsed. 
Chapter 12, Zeke and Zenoa were kidnapped. After fusing the weapons, Watson sprinkled a handful of chicken feed on the pentacolor fragrant chicken. He then returned home with a bronze tearthorn vest and the storm sword, which he was prepared to give to his big brother in a few days. When he went downstairs, he saw his big brother explaining to his father about Wesley and the others. There's no need to mention such a small matter. I'm a baron after all, just a rich man with a little money. What can he do to me? With you and Watson around, there's nothing to worry about. Catherine is still waiting for me. I'll go back first. Edward's tone sounded distinctly sour when he mentioned List. Father, there's something else I want to tell you. It's about Watson, Vincent hesitated. Just as he was about to explain, he shut his mouth after suddenly seeing Watson walk out of the room. What is it you want to say? Edward asked in puzzlement. Watson also pretended not to know anything and walked over. What's wrong, big brother? Nothing. Vincent shook his head and held back the words he wanted to say. He had just seen Watson produce two pieces of bronze tier equipment in the chicken farm with a flick of his finger. In fact, he still felt like he was dreaming at that point. Was it magic? Or was it an illusion? He would not have believed such things if he had not secretly seen it. If someone told him that there were people in that world who could forge bronze tier equipment without forging, he would treat as a complete joke. His father probably would not believe it even if he said it. With such an ability, the equipment could be sold a large sum of money could be earned, so long as Watson kept forging. At the thought of what Watson said about knowing a little about forging, Vincent felt lost for words. If that was what Watson meant by knowing a little, the other blacksmiths would be completely useless. Feeling that there was no point in saying anything more, Vincent shook his head again. I've been busy all day and am a little tired. I'll go and have some rest. He decided to go back and have a good sleep to calm his mood down. The sun was setting in the west. There was another farm was ten kilometers away. Although the farm was not huge, it still occupied thousands of square meters. There were dozens of farmers working in the surrounding fields, swinging their hoes and sweating profusely. The eastern border of the Holy Dragon Kingdom was vast and sparsely populated. It had endless fields, and those fields as well as the nearby labor force were basically owned by big farmers. The bigger the farm, the stronger the financial resources and the better the treatment given. Taking the Watson family for example, no one was willing to go there even if it had ten acres of land, but the farm in front of them had dozens of workers and was clearly quite powerful. Why don't we choose this one? Zeke stared at the farm entrance and said in a low voice. He was holding a basket covered with a black cloth, and a faint fragrance was emitted from it. Beside him, Zenoa was pushing a cart full of meat and flour. He had a blade of grass in his mouth, and after carefully sizing it up, he nodded, judging from the clothes of the workers in the fields, it's obvious that they are well treated here. This farmer should be very rich. We'll sell the eggs of the pentacolor fragrant chicken for two gold coins each. The two brothers sold more than two hundred eggs that day according to their family's request. The two brothers often went to the nearby farms and exchanged some marbles and toys with the people there. They were experts at exchanging plenty of things for the lowest possible price. If they saw people who seemed relatively rich, they would customize the price and make it higher. If they saw poor farmers, they would lower the price and add some meat and rice noodles as compensation. At the end of the day, they never lost out. It was precisely because Edward knew their abilities that he was not too worried about handing the eggs over to them. In half a day, they had already visited more than ten farms within a radius of ten kilometers. They successfully sold one hundred eggs, received one hundred and fifty gold coins and a cart of food. After they finished selling the remaining eggs, they could go back with twice as much gold coins as they had expected. Zeke, this family's owner might not accept it if the price is too high. Zenoa, at times like this, we need to cooperate and strike bargain. The two brothers looked at each other and smiled. They walked into the farmland, 
which erupted in exclamation within a short time. What did you say? These are the eggs of the pentacolor fragrant chicken. A dark-skinned farmer stared at the two eggs in Zeke's hands. He swallowed his saliva and cried out in surprise. What is a pentacolor fragrant chicken? You can only get one egg at the price two gold coins. Is this some kind of golden egg? Someone beside him asked. They were mere labor farmers who had never read a book, so most of them had never seen the world. However, there were also some people who had been to nearby towns and were more knowledgeable. On hearing that, he explained, the pentacolor fragrant chicken is a kind of gold-tier magical beast. It doesn't have much fighting strength, but the eggs that come out of it can prolong one's life and increase one's strength. It's said that the royal family of the Holy Dragon Kingdom has a chicken farm, and some of the great nobles are also raising this kind of chicken in private. So powerful. But I don't have that much money. It doesn't matter if you don't have it. Everyone, take all the money you have and pool it together. Let's see if it's enough to buy two. Zeke tried to urge them. Zenoa followed suit. Eating one egg can increase your lifespan by several years and increase your strength by more than a hundred caddies. You can buy one first and share it with others, then see if we're lying. We only have ten eggs. They're all from the nobles of Monty Town and are sold on a first-come, first-serve basis. Monty Town was the nearest town to the border. It was said to be very prosperous, though they had never been there before. Zeke and Zenoa were well aware of the reasoning behind not revealing one's wealth. Whenever they went to a farm, they sold ten eggs at most. They lied and said that they had picked them up from town and would not sell even one more. That way, no one would try to have any ideas about them. Quick, everyone, take out your money. The group of people discussed and they from their pockets the money they had worked hard to save. They gathered it together to discuss how they would split it later. As Zenoa mentioned, farmers relied on their strength to earn money. After eating the pentacolor fragrant chicken, they would be able to increase their strength and do more work. They would also be able to live for another two years. Why would anyone decline such a good thing? In a short while, the dozens of farmers present had gathered more than 180 silver coins. The two Singh brothers could only bear the pain and sell the two eggs. After that, they said, there are still some eggs left. Can one of you ask the owner if he's interested in buying the remaining eggs? A farmer turned around and hurriedly ran into the farm. As he ran, he shouted, Master Miles, there's people outside saying that there have eight pentacolor fragrant chicken. Do you want to buy them? Pentacolor fragrant chicken eggs? Such a valuable thing. He's not a swindler, right? A middle-aged man with a rich build and dressed luxuriously walked out and followed his farmer to the outside of the farm. He stared at Zeke and Zenoa before frowning. As a farmer, Miles had naturally heard of the name of Pentacolor Fragrant Chicken. In fact, he was in the magical beast business, but had never seen such a precious magical beast with his own eyes. Where did those two youths in shabby clothes get the eggs? So you're the landlord here. These eggs were secretly picked up by us from Monty Town. The price is two gold coins per egg, but you can get all them for fifteen gold coins. Zeke took out eight eggs and said generously. The remaining eggs were hidden under the rice noodles in the cart. One would not be able to notice them if one did not look carefully. Monty Town? Are you sure? Miles had a strange look on his face. I just went to Monty Town a few days ago. I haven't heard of anyone who got pentacolor fragrant chicken. We met a passing caravan and picked up these eggs from behind their car. So, they might not be from Monty Town. Zeke and Zeno looked at each other and said telepathically, it doesn't matter how the eggs came. Are you going to buy them or not? If not, we'll leave. Buy? Why wouldn't I buy? Tell me. Did the caravan leave from the Monty Town's north gate or south gate? South gate. Hehe, <laughs> there are only two gates in Monty Town. Where did that south gate? You've never been to Monty Town. Men, arrest these two swindlers. 
Miles deliberately tested them and found out that they were lying. He sneered and waved his hand. Dozens of farmers around him immediately picked up hoes and rushed up maliciously, much to Zeke and Zenoa's dismay. Chapter 13, Water Fairy Group Summon Master, we've captured the two youths and found more than a hundred caddies of rice and flour, dozens of caddies of pork, mutton, and beef, a hundred and fifty gold coins, and most importantly, more than ninety pentacolor fragrant chicken eggs. A farmer respectfully knelt in front of Miles and licked his lips as he spoke. More than ninety pentacolor fragrant chicken eggs. He had just bought one with a few of his fellow farmers and had only taken a bite to taste it. With that alone he could feel his body turn warm and his strength increase by at least ten pounds. If a fraction of an egg had such an effect, the farmer did not even dare to think more if he ate even more eggs. If he had known that these swindlers had that many eggs, he would not have spent all the money earlier. Fortunately, Master Miles was wise and smart. He saw through the tricks of these two little swindlers and captured them, so the money he spent would naturally be returned. With this thought in mind, the farmer carefully sized up Miles who was sitting on the tall chair. He found that Miles was holding his face with the back of his hand, and his eyes were drifting somewhere. Master? Master Miles? Miles came back to his senses after being called out. Find someone to move these things into the manor later. Don't tell anyone that we have captured these two children. As a secret reward, I will give the person who did it just now one pentacolor fragrant chicken egg. Thank you so much, Master. I've been wanting to taste the complete egg for a long time. The farmer was extremely excited. Miles frowned. What are you thinking about? What I meant was to share one egg with you. The farmer did not dare to say anything even though he was secretly criticizing the master for being stingy. These two kids are dressed in shabby clothes. One look and you can tell that they're not from rich families. They even lied about going to Monty Town. They're all lies. Hee <laughs> hee. Interrogate them properly. As long as you find out that these two people don't have a strong background, the money will belong to our farm. As Miles spoke, his expression became increasingly excited. To be able to get more than 90 eggs is definitely not a coincidence. Perhaps they have clues about the pentacolor fragrant chicken. Although Miles was happy to get more than a hundred gold coins, it was not as important as the pentacolor fragrant chicken. The pentacolor fragrant chicken was only available to the great nobles, and the location must be heavily guarded. These two kids might be able to steal two or three eggs from it, but ninety was impossible, unless they were raising the fowl itself or they knew where the beast was. Miles' breathing became heavy when he thought about how his farm could get such a precious gold-tier magical beast. Master Miles, how should we interrogate them? As long as you don't kill them, you can interrogate them however you want. Miles waved his hand and had a fierce smile. He was not a cruel person, but for the sake of a bright future, he could only let those two people named Zeke and Zenoa suffer. Three days had passed since Zeke and Zenoa left. During those three days, Watson had learned two iron-tier water element spells from the magic book. One of them was called Water Fairy Summon, which could summon a fist-sized water fairy to help scout the way and sense danger. The other spell was called Water Shield, which used magical power to form a shield that was half the size of a person, blocking the attacks of iron-tier individuals. At this moment, Watson stood in the farm and gently waved his hand. A small fish-shaped fairy made of sky-blue water nimbly circled around his neck. It swiggled its tail and sprinkled water droplets everywhere. In his right hand, he held a solid shield that was also sky-blue. Water swirled on it, forming a vortex. Clapping his hands, the shield in Watson's hand disappeared along with the water elf. He sighed and said, that basic magic theory only records four iron tier spells. There are a few other spells with different attributes, but I can't learn them either. One could only learn corresponding spells if one possessed a specific elemental talent. Therefore, he could only learn water element spells. Moreover, there was only one basic theory of magic in his family's magic book. 
however, he was fortunate to have the super fusion system. Let me see what these two iron tier spells can merge into. System, initiate fusion. Master has successfully merged the iron tier spells, water fairy summon and water shield, into a bronze tier spell, water fairy group summon. Bronze tier spell, water fairy group summon. Effect, summons water fairies ranging from 1 to 100. Each of them has the iron tier combat power. They can explore an area of a thousand meters, and can also be merged into magic weapons such as knives, swords, shields, axes, and so on, causing great damage. Upon successful fusion, the specific contents of the spell appeared in Watson's mind. Unlike the two iron tier spells that he had learned after three days of hard work, the spells that were produced by the system fusion did not require him to study. They had already been refined to reach their peak. Watson could not help but open his hands and cast the spell that he had just fused, Water Fairy Group Summon. A blue fish that looked the same as before floated beside him. Then, the number of blue fish increased and became a hundred, spanning ten meters all around Watson. It was daytime, but the faint blue light shone on the place as though he was in the deep sea. Watson waved his hand again and the 100 water elves merged to turn into a blue river. It flew into the sky and transformed into a huge fist that was more than 10 meters long. He swung the fist fiercely in the air, producing a whistling sound, as well as bearing at least a few thousand pounds of strength. Then, the fist loosened and turned into a palm, slamming hard on the ground. Boom! Cracks that were several meters long appeared on the earth. Watson's body rose up as well. The palm turned into a giant sword and an axe, destroying the ground with wild abandon. Cluck, cluck, cluck. The pentacolor fragrant chicken, which was strolling in the chicken farm, let out a puzzled cry and avoided Watson from a distance. It did not know what its master was thinking. No wonder mages are known to have the strongest attack power of all classes. After wreaking havoc for a few minutes and staring at the half-destroyed ground, Watson's body shook, and a sense of weakness came from his soul. Ordinary bronze-tier warriors could kill people from ten meters away, but that was using movement techniques and sword skills. Being able to kill a few people at one time was already good enough, but it paled in comparison to the enjoyment of killing someone using a forty-meter-long machete. When the Water Fairy's magic weapon smashed down, a great number of people would have died. I can already be considered a bronze tier mage now, but this still isn't enough. I wonder what effect it will have when I combine the two bronze tier spells I have now. Watson rubbed his chin and pondered. He was considered strong among bronze tier mages after mastering two bronze tier spells, but it was still not enough. A few days ago, Wesley came to rob their chicken, and in a few days, it might be List who came. It was important that he became stronger. Before he could continue fusing, his brother's voice suddenly sounded. What have you been doing, Watson? Father asked me to see if there was an earthquake. His brother, Vincent, stood helplessly ten meters away and stared at the messy farm. The corner of his mouth twitched. He had been taking care of the pentacolor fragrant chicken for the past few days. He knew that his brother was experimenting with magic but what kind of magic was so powerful that it could cause an earthquake-like noise? Big brother, I'm studying iron tier magic. I don't know how I made such a big noise. Watson scratched his head shyly. Vincent had a strange look on his face. Watson was taking him for a fool. Who would believe that it was merely iron tier magic? Taking a deep breath, Vincent walked to Watson's side and pressed his brother's shoulder, Watson. There are some things I didn't want to say before, but I have to say them now. Where did you learn magic? And where did this pentacolor fragrant chicken come from? Tell me the truth. Chapter 14, Creating a Silver Tear Spell Using Fusion Big Brother, what are you talking about? What truth? Watson pretended to be stupid. I learned magic from the books at home. As for this pentacolor fragrant chicken, it came in from outside. Didn't I tell you before? Watson. Vincent's eyes were sharp, 
and his expression became more and more strange. Are you going to lie even to your big brother? He had seen Watson fuse two pieces of bronze tier equipment right before his eyes and acted as if he knew nothing in the past few days. He wanted to see when his younger brother would finally come out with the truth and what kind of excuses would be used. Vincent had originally been very calm, but he could no longer contain himself after seeing the magic that Watson researched. Vincent was not envious of the ten-year-old child who possessed magic and warrior qualities that far surpassed his own, as well as had knowledge about other curious things. He just could not help feeling curious. Watson could not even manage to come up with a better excuse. Vincent had read all the books in the house, and there was only one magic book that detailed iron-level magic. It could not possibly be that powerful. All right, big brother, I admit that the magic I studied did not come from books, but... Upon noticing that his big brother had discovered something unusual, Watson hesitated and did not not know whether to reveal everything about the system. They were all family. It would be risky if he told them, but it would not have that much of an impact. Should he just reveal everything? At that point, Vincent had already opened his mouth. I know. Behind you is a powerful mage who's imparting his knowledge to you. Right. Hum. Watson swallowed back the words that were about to come out of his mouth. What powerful mage? How did his big brother's line of thought function? He nodded and gestured for his big brother to continue. Even if magic is cultivated to a high level, it can never be as strong as a warrior's body, but rumor has it that some magic can stop the flow of time and prevent people from aging. It's common for some powerful mages to live for hundreds of years. These mages do not like to stay in one place and prefer to travel around the world. Don't tell me you met such a powerful mage and took him as your master. Vincent asked. In this world, it was common for the weak to take the strong as their master. Strong individuals needed someone to pass on their legacy and serve them. Watson must have been lucky to meet such a person, as nothing else could explain how Watson knew magic was not recorded in the books. Could it be that Watson had learned it himself? Impossible. Even a mage as strong as Platinum Tear or Diamond Tear could not comprehend magic. The answer was obvious after excluding those factors. Lying isn't a good habit, Watson. I hope that you'll become a more honest person in the future. Even if you secretly took a powerful mage as your master, there's no reason to hide it. It's a good thing that he's willing to teach you magic. When will you invite him here so we can treat him as well? My master is old and likes peace and quiet. He's very elusive too, so even I can't find him. Seeing that Vincent was all but certain that Watson had a master, Watson simply played along with it. The strong are always mysterious, I can understand. Maintaining a sense of mystery was a common problem for the strong, so Vincent did not care. He pointed at the pentacolor fragrant chicken that was striding valiantly in the chicken farm. This pentacolor fragrant chicken was also given to you by your master, right? You're right, big brother. Watson could only nod. You've noticed that too. Big brother, you're really you. Humph, do you think my years as a wanderer have all been for nothing? All else aside, my discerning judgment has never been surpassed. Vincent put his hands behind his back and puffed out his chest. It's easier if you just be honest. You should continue your training. Remember to invite your master over for a meal the next time he comes. After saying that, Vincent walked out of the chicken farm with the truth that he had obtained, but then stopped after taking two steps. Oh right, about the armor that you said you were going to forge a few days ago. Don't worry, big brother. I've already handed the armor and weapons to my master. I believe he'll be able to forge it with magic in two days. He did not expect that his big brother would think up an imaginary master and attribute all the actions to him. It was good though, as he did not need to explain further. Still lying to me? You say you learned magic from your master, but you forged the armor and weapons yourself. Vincent turned his head and glared at Watson angrily. I just told you that lying isn't a good habit. Ah? Watson was dumbfounded. 
why was he the one who was alleged to have forged the weapons when the magic was taught by his master and the pentacolor fragrant chicken was a gift from the master? Vincent's logic should dictate that it was normal that his master forged the weapon. Watson was still in confusion when he heard his big brother's voice, I saw you hide the forged weapon in the house with my own eyes. What is there to hide? I'll show these weapons to our siblings so they can admire them. I believe that father will be very happy to know that a forging genius like you has appeared in our family. Half an hour later, Watson walked on the farm with a complicated expression and pushed aside the weeds that were taller than him. He had almost been exposed by his big brother earlier, and after asking carefully, he found out that Vincent had seen him forging weapons. Hence the series of questioning earlier. To be honest, Watson felt that it was quite funny. Having just returned home, he took the thorn vest and storm sword out for Vincent from his room. Vincent looked absolutely spectacular when he wore those two pieces of equipment. Even his father Edward was drooling in envy when he saw it. He said, as the head of the family, I've been lacking such suitable weapons all these years. Why don't you lend me this vest for two days? Catherine grabbed him by the ear and him dragged away under the excuse of how shameless can you be to take your children's things ago. The third and fourth siblings were not around, while the fifth and sixth did not go downstairs. The only one who was around, was Scarlet the seventh, was also extremely envious when she saw her awe-inspiring big brother. She insisted on pulling Watson along to help her make a copy, but Watson ran out after getting annoyed. The news that he was good at forging had already spread throughout the family. H.S. brothers and sisters would probably come and bother him again if he he went back. After this incident, Watson realized that the chicken farm was too close to his home. Whatever he did would be discovered by his family. However, the abandoned farmland in his home was different. He could not see anyone in sight and could do whatever he wanted. I'll fuse two bronze tear spells here and clear the weeds too. Watson put aside his chaotic thoughts and rubbed his hands. He began to fuse the water fairy group summon and the rainstorm. He had only tried to fuse iron tear spells before and he wondered what a bronze tear spell would look like when combined. Congratulations, Master. You have successfully fused two bronze tear spells. You've obtained a silver tear spell, water elemental warrior summoning. Bang! Dark clouds that stretched for a thousand meters came crashing down from the sky. Strong winds bent the grass, and rain fell from the sky. Rain was no longer an appropriate description, and it should be called thick water dragons. The water dragons fell to the ground and turned into three meter tall soldiers, they were covered in heavy armor and held long swords and shields in their hands. There were a hundred soldiers that were practically the same as real people, except that their bodies were blue and the weapons made of water were as heavy as steel. Far away from the farm, a few people doing farm work raised their heads and looked up at the gloomy sky with panic on their faces. It's going to rain again? Why is it always raining these days? Is this still considered rain, though? Why does it feel as though there's a hole in the sky? And the clouds in the sky only point to one place. Damn, this is really strange. Chapter 15, Scarlet's Dream Silvertear Magic, Water Elemental Warrior Summoning Effect, summons a bronze tear soldier made of water. There is no limit to the number of summons. The number of summons is determined by the level of magic possessed by the master. However, if the summoning lasts for a long time, the water elemental warrior will possess a certain level of self-awareness. If the water elemental warrior is too far away from the master, it will dissipate. Information pertaining to the water elemental warrior summoning appeared in Watson's mind, prompting him to curl the corners of his mouth up. As expected of a silver tear spell. If I had enough magic, wouldn't I be able to summon tens of thousands of water elemental warriors? Just imagine how many bronze tear soldiers would appear all over the mountains and plains. Simply standing there without having to make a move was enough to scare off anyone who harbored evil intentions. Unfortunately, Watson's idea was not so easy to realize. The strength of a mage was determined by two parts. The first part was the spell's tear, 
and the other was Mage's own magical ability. The spell's tier is determines the lowest limit of a spell's power, while the one's magic ability determined the upper limit of the spell. The same spell would be more powerful if casted by someone with higher strength. Some higher level mages, could cast a mere iron tier water ball spell with a power equivalent to that of falling meteorites. One's proficiency in magic could be increased by continuously casting spells. Watson had just started training, so the amount of magic in his body was not much. If he used his full strength now, he could summon a hundred water elemental warriors at the same time, but only for a few minutes. If he wanted those water elemental warriors to remain for an entire day, he could only summon ten at any one time. Looking at the one hundred water elemental soldiers in the field, Watson really wanted to shout, Shurama, your emperor is back. In less than a minute, Watson could already feel the magic power in his soul rapidly dissipating. He could only make a come-hither movement and maintain ten warriors while the remaining ones were allowed to disappear. Under the dark clouds, the blades in the hands of those ten water elemental warriors morphed into long sickles. They moved in all directions from Watson's side. Slash. Slash. Every time the three-meter-tall water elemental warrior waved the sickles in his hands, a fan-shaped area would be cut off, and weeds would fly up neatly. In a short while, the ten water elemental warriors had rushed out of several barren paths in the farmland. Watson simply hugged the back of his head with both hands and lay on the fertile land that was emitting a fragrant smell, at this speed, we can clear the farmland in half a day. We can start sowing when third and fourth brother return. Watson had specifically asked Zeke and Zenoa to bring back some wheat seeds from their journey. Once the seeds were planted in the farmland and subsequently fused, there would be much more food to eat along with the eggs in the house. With that thought in mind, Watson closed his eyes. The surrounding water elemental warriors were still diligently carrying out his orders. Another two days passed. Four days had already passed since Singh and Sinway went out. During these two days, Watson took care of the chicken farm in the morning and occasionally sparred with his big brother. Having obtained the thorn vest and the storm sword, Vincent felt that his combat strength had been increased somewhat and insisted on dragging Watson along to give it a try. Watson did not refuse, as he also needed to improve his strength through battle. However, even if he did not use the phoenix wings and intentionally let his big brother win, he still won many times. On a couple of occasions, he would deliberately lose to prevent his big brother's confidence from dwindling. On this morning, the spring scenery outside was great. Watson was about to head to the chicken farm when he was intercepted by his seventh sibling, Scarlet. Watson, could you accompany me to go hunting? Scarlet carried a hard wooden bow on her back. The bowstring crossed her newly developed chest, forming two beautiful curves. Scarlet's face was flushed from having eaten well these few days. Watson admired his sister's beauty. Girls developed earlier than boys. The eleven-year-old Scarlet was only slightly shorter than him. Of course, admiring was all he could do as his body was still that of Scarlet's younger brother even if his soul did not belong to that world. I still have to take care of the chicken farm. Before Watson could finish his words, Scarlet had already walked up to him in dissatisfaction and grabbed his shoulder. Big brother will take care of the chicken farm. There's no need for you to be there. Big brother has obtained two pieces of bronze equipment these few days, and he's getting arrogant. When are you going to forge one for me? Scarlet took a glance at the simple wooden bow behind her. Mentioning that alone was enough to make her angry. She had always been the one who brought Watson out to hunt and she came first. Whether it was treating Watson well or to keeping Watson company, she had been the first to do all that, so why was it that when Big Brother returned, he had received so many benefits from Watson, yet she had received nothing? It was unfair. Wait till I have the time. Watson did not have any materials as of then, so he naturally could not fuse any weapons. Humph, I think you're being biased. I'm going to ask you again. Are you going hunting with me or not? Watson had a helpless look on his face after having his ears pulled tightly by Scarlet. 
What else could he say? I'll go with you. Stop pulling, it's very painful. Watson, quick, look, I've shot two rabbits. Scarlet ran through the forest and carried the two Snow White rabbits back. Each rabbit had a sharp wooden arrow stuck in its head. Hunting animals was not that easy under normal circumstances, but her bountiful success was due to having eaten the pentacolor fragrant chicken's eggs in the past few days. The result was an strength increase of several hundred caddies. They were at a place called the Misty Forest, which was situated not too far north from the Watson residence. A faint mist drifted through the forest, and small animals frequently ran past them. It was a public place for nearby farms to hunt, and rumor had it that there were powerful magical beasts in the depths of the forest. Since the mist was so thick that one could not see one's fingers, only brave adventurers dared to enter. Watson and Scarlet were at a small hill outside that forest. Watson lay on his back under a huge tree, with a blade of grass in his mouth. Awesome. You're really amazing, big sister. Although he said that, his expression was very calm. After all, his soul was an adult, and Scarlet was just a little brat in his eyes. He might as well meditate when he had the time. Meditation was a way of raising one's magical ability, but the prerequisite was that he must not release any magic. The specific details of the method to increase the amount of magic were recorded in the Encyclopedia of Basic Magic. Hearing Watson's praise, Scarlet could not help but puffed out her chest. That's right. Even father praised my archery. Do you want to learn it? I'll pass. Watson refused, but Scarlet walked begrudgingly to his side. I know you're learning magic, but don't underestimate archery. You can kill prey from a thousand meters away with archery. Can magic do it? Scarlet's dream was to become a great archer. To become an archer, she had to sign a contract with an elf. However, money was required. Her family might not have had any money in the past, but with the pentacolor fragrant chicken, her desire was reignited. As a result, she was very unhappy after seeing that Watson did not really appreciate her archery. Archery can do what magic can do. In order to prevent his seventh sibling from continuing to grind him down, Watson turned his body helplessly and hooked his finger. With a loud boom, dark clouds gathered in the sky and churned non-stop. A water pillar descended from the sky and landed a thousand meters away, it transformed into a water elemental warrior who held a spear in his hand. It was as if a god had descended from the heavens. The water elemental warrior darted into the forest, either sweeping or thrusting. In a short moment, a bunch of rabbits were strung on the spear and returned. There were at least ten of them. Scarlet's mouth was wide open when she saw that and she had difficulty closing it. After working so hard to catch one rabbit, she had never expected that using magic could easily catch more rabbits. Lowering her head to take a look, Scarlet suddenly felt that the bow in her hand was no longer useful. She simply threw it aside and walked to Watson, shaking his arm. Watson, teach me magic. Scarlet used to dream of becoming an archer, but that dream had since changed. Chapter 16, Five Pentacolor Fragrant Chickens In half a day, Watson and Scarlet hunted down dozens of rabbits, with most of the kills made by the water elemental warriors. In addition to rabbits, Watson had also used the water elemental warriors to catch thousands of wild chickens, nearly emptying out all the chicken flocks at the periphery of the forest. The water elemental warriors rampaged around and came out of the forest with dozens of hens that had been struck unconscious, throwing them all over. Scarlet had a shocked look when she first saw all that, but she was eventually used to it after seeing the increasing number of hens. Watson was prepared to head home and create a few more pentacolor fragrant chickens through fusion. Although the output of one pentacolor fragrant chicken was enough for their family to live a carefree life, who would complain about having more money? I've already told you, Scarlet. You can't learn magic. Don't bother me anymore. On the way home, Watson explained helplessly to Scarlet. The tall water elemental warriors followed behind 
with rabbit corpses strung along its long spear as it guided the vast and mighty flock of chickens. Faced with those water elemental warriors, those wild chickens could be likened to mice coming face to face with a cat. They did not even dare to raise their heads, and could only let out low clucks. Ever since Scarlet saw Watson using magic to display his might, she stopped preaching to him about the benefits of archery and wanted to learn magic instead. However, learning magic required talent, and Scarlet obviously did not have it. Why are you able to learn it while I can't? I remember that no magic talent had been detected in you before. You must have used some way. I don't care. I want to learn magic anyway, so think of a way for me. Scarlet swept her gaze across the flock of chickens and her eyebrows twitched uncontrollably. She then placed her hands on her hips and asserted stub boldly. Watson felt a slight headache coming on. His soul belonged to another world, hence the presence of magic talent and assistance from the system. He was completely different from Scarlet. I've also just started learning magic. It's really hard for me to teach you. How about this? When Zeke and Zenoa come back in the next few days, I promise I'll have them go out and buy some weapons. Then I'll find a way to forge a set of bows and arrows for you. Deal. Deal. Pinky swear. Watson and Scarlet hooked their fingers together. His adorable seventh sibling began to trot around happily. She asked, when will Zeke and Zenoa be back? It was obvious that she was looking forward to the weapons she was about to obtain. Judging from the time, they should be back by now. I wonder they faced any delays on their way back. Watson was well aware of his two brothers' personalities. He knew that they would not stop until they sold everything they had. Since they were in possession of more than 200 eggs, it would take a few days for them to sell them off. The two brothers were very smart and Watson was not that worried at all. Upon returning home, Watson made the water elemental warrior disappear. He also had his seventh sister Scarlet bring back the dozens of rabbits that they had shot. He then proceeded to send the several thousand hens that he had caught to the chicken farm and began to fuse them into pentacolor fragrant chickens. After the fusion was completed, there were four more chickens. Within the huge chicken farm, all five pentacolor fragrant chickens were walking aggressively. Occasionally, they would raise their heads to look at each other, but none dared to encroach upon the other. Not bad. I'll accompany Scarlet to the forest in the future and do my best to get more pentacolor fragrant chickens. Watson looked at the pentacolor fragrant chickens as if he was looking at a bunch of golden coins. Even a noble might only have one or two multicolored chickens in their family. In the entire Holy Dragon Kingdom, only the royal family could open a chicken farm for pentacolor fragrant chickens. He sprinkled a handful of feed on the ground and tended to the five birds. When Watson returned home, his mother Catherine had already prepared dinner. She also placed a bowl of vegetable broth and an egg in front of him, and the others had the same meal too. It was rare for the family to eat so well with one dish and one soup. Vincent, go and send these two dishes upstairs. Your fifth and sixth siblings aren't coming down to eat. Edward sat in the main seat and held a knife and fork as he waved at Vincent. I know Peter's health has always been bad, but why isn't Margaret coming down? Vincent asked in puzzlement. The sixth child Margaret was only two years older than Watson. During the year he left home, the youngest three children in the family were only a few years old and often ran outside without a care in the world. That's in the past. After she realized that she didn't have the talent for cultivation and was unable to become anything, she somehow became addicted to reading. She hid in her room all day and didn't go out. I haven't seen her in a long time either. After Edward explained, Vincent did not think much of it and sent two servings of food upstairs. It was nearly evening. Edward wiped his mouth with a handkerchief and swept his gaze over the people eating in front of him. He then focused his attention on Watson and had a gratified expression on his face. While he was cooking, Scarlet had told him about their hunting session in the forest. He knew that Watson had caught several thousand hens by himself. He felt proud to be able to give birth to such an outstanding child. It's been four days. 
Zeke and Zeno still aren't back yet. The chicken has laid another 400 eggs. If it took them so long to sell 200 eggs, it might be hard on them to sell even more. I've decided to contact a few trustworthy merchants to transport our eggs to Monty Town. There are many more rich people there. Trading was not a simple math equation. Zeke and Zeno needed four days to sell 200 eggs, which meant that it might take half a month to sell 400 eggs. Not only did they have to travel a longer distance, but the nearby farms also did not have that much money. The two brothers had basically earned most of their money from the nearby farms, in particular those farmers who had given all their belongings just to have a little taste. Although the eggs were good, there was nothing they could do if they did not have enough money. I'll follow your arrangements, Father Watson nodded. Although the Pentacolor Fragrant Chickens is famous, no one would be coveting it if there's only one. As a last resort, I'll use the name of the Saint Laurent family. I believe that no one will dare to plot against us. Edward thought for a moment, he added, if that doesn't work either, we'll just sell the Pentacolor Fragrant Chicken. Watson, I heard from Scarlet that you caught several thousand hens today. With that as a supplement, it'll be enough for us to sustain ourselves even if we sell the Pentacolor Fragrant Chicken. Bring me to the chicken farm to have a look later. Despite being the head of the family, he lacked the ability to give his family a good life. It would be far too embarrassing if he continued to show little concern for the family's business and hand it all to his youngest son. As soon as Edward finished speaking, Watson seemed a little awkward. He coughed dryly and said, Um. I'm sorry, father, but the chickens that I caught during the day have all run away again. Again. Edward had an expression that seemed to say, You've got to be kidding me. That's right. Watson's gaze was erratic. Maybe it's because there are new Pentacolor fragrant chickens in the chicken farm. Then there's nothing we can do, Edward lamented. He knew that the Pentacolor fragrant chicken was a gold-tier magical beast that had territorial awareness and would not live with ordinary hens, but he did not expect it to be that independent. Could it be that they were unable to raise ordinary hens at home unless they sold the Pentacolor fragrant chicken? It was a rare feat for Watson to work that hard and capture so many hens from the forest. Edward initially had that line of though and rude what happened, but he quickly realized that something was off about Watson's words. Watson, did you just say that there are new Pentacolor fragrant chickens in the chicken farm? Yes, there are a total of five Pentacolor fragrant chickens in the chicken farm now. Watson nodded. Five chickens. With a whoosh, the handkerchief that Edward was using to wipe his mouth fell to the ground. Catherine also put down the egg that she could not bring herself to eat. Scarlet stared at Watson with puffy cheeks while big brother Vincent held the soup bowl and froze as the soup slid down the corner of his mouth. Everyone looked at Watson as if they were looking at a monster. Chapter 17, Off to Miles Manor Inside Miles Manor's dungeon The cold, wet ground was uneven and covered with hay. Two figures were chained up and covered in scars. Tell me, who are you people? Where did the Pentacolor fragrant chicken come from? A guard held a whip and whipped the two boys fiercely. I told you a few days ago, mister. My name is Zeke, and this is my younger brother, Zenoa. We usually steal from here and there, and we stole the Pentacolor fragrant chicken eggs from a caravan in Monty Town. What else do you want from us? Zeke's face was bruised and his swollen eyes revealed a hint of helplessness. Yeah right. Master Miles already said that you've never been to Monty Town. Don't blame us for going hard on you if you don't tell us. The guard whipped Zeke's thigh, causing him to fall to the ground in pain. He hugged his leg and could not speak. We really stole the eggs from Monty Town. There's nothing else we can tell you even if you beat us to death. Zeno gritted his teeth and stretched out his neck. Two miserable little wretches. The guard threw away his whip and glanced angrily at the two of them before turning around and leaving the dungeon. After the guard had left, Zeno crawled to Zeke's side. Are you all right, brother? I'm fine. Remember, we're from Monty Town. 
We've never seen the pentacolor fragrant chicken before. It wasn't easy for Watson to get the beast and we can't lose it. Our family is counting on it to survive. We can't say anything even if we die. Don't worry, brother. I won't say anything even if I die. Outside the dungeon, the guard left and went up to a luxuriantly dressed middle-aged man. He bent down awkwardly and said, Master Miles, these two people are too stubborn. I didn't get anything out of them. It's already been four days, and you still don't know anything. How useless of you. Miles' eyes were cold and the mustache on his mouth trembled slightly. Master, what do we do now? Do we continue hitting them? They'll die if we continue hitting them and if that happens, we won't be able to get anything out of them. Get a painter to draw the faces of these two people, then go to the nearby farms and ask if anyone knows them. With his expression becoming much colder, Miles thought for a moment and said, Spread some rumors while you're at it and say that those two people stole something from our farm. If no one comes to claim them within two days, I'll chop off their heads. If their relatives and friends hear about this, they certainly won't just sit around. It's fine if the two kids don't tell the truth, because someone will eventually say it for them. Yes, master. The guard nodded respectfully and left, leaving Miles clenching his fists with an vague expression. He was able to become a big farm owner not because of his extraordinary wisdom, but because of his ruthlessness. Just wait until the families of these two people come. If they don't have a strong background, we'll kill them all. That way, no one will know that I got the pentacolor fragrant chicken. In the chicken farm back at Watson's home. Watson, father asked me to come over and ask how many eggs are there in the house now. Vincent walked in from outside. Watson, who was looking after the chicken farm, stood up and said with a smile, Brother, you came at the right time. The pentacolor fragrant chicken has just laid some eggs. I don't know how many exactly, but you can give them a count. Vincent walked into the chicken house and found that there was a hill of eggs inside. After carefully counting, he found that there were more than 800 eggs. His mouth curled up into a surprised smile though it was not as huge as a few days ago. Continuous surprises would eventually cause a person to get numb to it. Five pentacolor fragrant chickens could lay 500 eggs per day, which equaled 15,000 eggs in a month. That alone was worth 15,000 gold coins. The money was enough to sustain their family several generations over. For that reason, Edward happily announced in the morning that each person could eat three eggs per meal from that day onward. After eating a lot of eggs in recent days, Vincent's strength had increased by almost 1,000 caddies and his combat aura strength had also doubled. As of that morning, he had officially become a bronze tier warrior. It could be taken as a double blessing. Watson, these pentacolor fragrant chickens were also a gift from your master, right? Didn't I say before that you should invite your master into our home for a while if he came? Vincent asked somewhat unhappily when he thought of that. No one else could have been that generous. Since those four pentacolor fragrant chickens came from Watson's master, it was proof that Watson had met that mysterious master again. Vincent's speedy ascension to bronze tier warrior was all thanks to those pentacolor fragrant chickens, so it was only right that he thanked the master properly. I'm sorry, big brother. My master left after leaving behind these four chickens. I didn't have time to speak to him. Are you sure that all your master did was leave behind these four chickens? I'm sure. You're lying again, Watson. Vincent cocked his eyebrows. Under Watson's nervous gaze, the young man said, aside from just leaving behind four pentacolor fragrant chickens, your master took away thousands of hens too, didn't he? Does your master like to eat chicken? He also took away 1,000 of our hens the first time, right? If he ate them all in a few days, does it mean that he has a big appetite? Vincent had checked yesterday and discovered that there were no chickens running away from the hen house. No one had seen any of those wild chickens running away from the nearby farms. The only explanation was that Watson's master had taken them away. It was not a big deal 
but Vincent was hoping that Watson would not hide it from his family. Big brother is right. My master does love to eat chickens. Watson wiped the cold sweat from his forehead. He thought that Vincent had seen something, but his big brother's line of thinking did not let him down. Watson, there's no need to worry about food and drink at home now. We won't even be able to spend all the money from selling so many eggs. Do you think we can keep some and let them hatch? Vincent did not dwell on this question and quickly came up with a new idea. I'm afraid that won't work. The hatching rate of pentacolor fragrant chicken is low to begin with. Moreover, an unfertilized egg can't produce a chick without a rooster. If pentacolor fragrant chicken was that fertile, it would not have been such a precious gold tier magical beast. It doesn't matter whether it works or not. The least we have to do is try. Please ask your master to send a rooster the next time he comes. Vincent seemed to be sure that Watson's master would come to give them a rooster. After saying a few words, he ran out of the chicken farm and found an empty space to practice his combat aura. The path of cultivation was like sailing against the current. Setbacks were aplenty if one did not advance further. Watson observed for a while and withdrew his gaze. His brother's suggestion was good, but applied only to ordinary people. The system could create a pentacolor fragrant chicken simply by fusing a thousand ordinary chickens. The probability of the pentacolor fragrant chicken laying a fertile egg was less than one in a thousand. Even if it a chick hatched, they still had to buy expensive feed, and it would take a long time for the chick to mature. Therefore, it was not as convenient to just fuse them. He made up his mind to head to Misty Forest with Scarlet to catch some wild chickens and fuse them later. Before he left however, Watson was forced to stay behind after receiving a startling message. Twenty minutes later. Father, is it true that Zeke and Zenoa were captured? Watson paced in the hall and frowned. In front of him, Edward held a piece of parchment with a portrait drawn on it, frowning. Look at this. According to what it says, Zeke and Zenoa were captured by some ten miles away by Miles Manor's people. Right now, the people from the manor are issuing arrest warrants everywhere. I reckon they will find our house very soon. What should we do? Edward had already contacted the merchants and would be coming over to collect the eggs in a few days. The sudden incident made it abundantly clear that Miles Manor was wanted the pentacolor fragrant chicken. Miles Manor also said that if no one goes to their manor and pick the kids up within two days, they'll chop off Zeke and Zenoa's heads. How dare they? Vincent was also there. I'll go. I'll bring Zeke and Zenoa back. I. Before he could finish, Watson had already waved his hand. There's no need. Big brother, you'll stay here and look after the chicken farm. I'll go myself. Zeke and Zenoa were captured because of me. I should be responsible for them. Although the people in his family were not very reliable, they were still family to Watson. Anyone who laid a hand on his family would have to pay the price. Chapter 18, You'll Die If You Trigger Me At night, Miles Manor Master Miles held a feast that night. The meat and rice noodles that Zeke and Zenoa had painstakingly collected had all been cooked. Each farmer's face was ruddy, and they held wine glasses while wolfing down meat in large mouthfuls. Master Miles is rarely this generous. It's the first time our master has treated everyone to a meal, isn't it? A farmer asked drunkenly. This is what you call generous? Don't you know our master's personality? The reason he treated everyone to this meal was because he had sent people out this morning to spread news and inquire about the two little swindlers in the dungeon. He finally got all that information. What did he find out? That these two little swindlers are the third and fourth children of a certain abject baron's family. This family doesn't come from any background, and it's very likely that they're the ones who have the pentacolor fragrant chicken. Master Miles is about to bring someone to destroy that family tomorrow. He's going to bring back the pentacolor fragrant chicken, said a farmer next to him who was obviously aware of the situation. His tongue was practically hanging out of his mouth when he spoke. No wonder Master was so generous. 
He's going to be rich when he gets the pentacolor fragrant chicken. Master wants to shut our mouths with this meal, the others helplessly said similar words. Everyone knew that Master Miles was very stingy. Whenever they did farm work in the past, half of their wages were frequently deducted for every small mistake that they made. He even paid their wages in eight installments and never even treated anyone to a meal before. On that occasion, Miles clearly knew that his actions were abhorrent and he did not want anyone to go out and talk about it. He wants to send us off with a meal and he doesn't even want to give us a few eggs? Master Miles is as stingy as ever. The group of people cursed in their hearts, but they still raised their wine glasses and clinked with each other. I'm still as generous as ever. These guys should be grateful to me for having free meat to eat. Miles sat in the main seat and gulped down his wine. His original intention of having people spread rumors during the day was to lure Zeke and Zenoa's family out. He did not expect to receive news of that poor baron, who was staying just over ten miles away. Pentacolor fragrant chicken that Miles had always dreamed of could finally be in his possession as early as the next morning. Master, what should we do with the two boys in the dungeon? They haven't eaten for almost a day. Should we send them some food? A guard asked Miles tactfully from one side. Send them my foot. They're useless now. Bring us some men over to kill those boys after the meal. Remember to do it cleanly. Miles waved his hand. Ever since they managed to get the information, keeping Zeke and Zenoa around would mean that they had two extra mouths to feed. It would be better to kill them. After their bodies rotted, they could still be used as fodder, and their waste could be recycled. Miles did not take long to think about what would happen after Zeke and Zenoa's death. Also, let these farmers drink more wine and eat less meat. It's not like meat grow on trees. They don't even work hard on normal days and only know how to eat. Yes, master. The guard nodded. Just as he was about to carry the wine glass down and get the farmers drunk so that the master would need to worry that much, a slender figure bumped into him all of a sudden. Plop. The wine spilled all over the guard's body after being knocked down. The guard turned his head while cursing and discovered that the person who bumped into him was a young boy wearing coarse clothes. His face was fair and clean, and he was about ten years old. Below the boy's brown hair was a pair of sky-blue eyes that rivaled the ocean's blue color, and those eyes were looking straight at him with a cute smile on his lips. The boy's body was quite well-built compared to children of a similar age, but he was far inferior to an adult. The guard's first thought was to wonder how a kid could have such great strength. He then turned his head in anger and said, Damn it, who brought this child in here? I'll ask again, whose child does he belong to? Bring him home right now. Aren't you afraid that Master Miles will deduct your wages? As soon as his voice fell, the farmers who were still drinking stopped what they were doing and the surroundings fell into silence. It was rare for Miles to treat them to a meal, and they would never dare to bring their families over. Such an act was an unforgivable sin in the eyes of the stingy Master Miles. Whose child is this? He's quite good looking. David. This kid has a head of brown hair. Could he be your son? I heard that your family has a ten-year-old child. The farmers looked at each other and fixed their gazes on a middle-aged man with brown hair and a big beard. The big-bearded middle-aged man was shocked, he cursed, cut the crap. You're suspecting me just because of our same hair color? There are many people with the same hair color. Why don't you look at the other features? My eyes are green and this little guy's eyes are blue. Is that what you call the same? Looking up at the youth in front of him, David continued, and this little guy is so good looking. I can never father such a beautiful son. Miles also stared at the child who had sneaked in without anyone noticing. He frowned, stood up, and shook the wine glass in his hand. Whose child is it? Don't any of you recognize it? If no one recognizes it, everyone's wages will be deducted by half this month. He was feeling heartbroken for these farmers who were eating and drinking so much, and now he had an excuse. David, just admit it. This is definitely your child. Why should I acknowledge it? 
David was anxious. He was pulled back by the people around him and kept trying to comfort him, it's better for you to deduct your wages alone than have everyone else's wages deducted. The master's old habit of being stingy is acting up again. He's clearly looking for an excuse to exploit us. Just bear with it. We'll share our wages with you if worse comes to worse. After being persuaded a few times, David was somewhat moved. He thought that there was no harm in acknowledging that he had such a handsome son, so he immediately waved his hand. Before he could speak, however, the boy had already smiled and said, Miles, right? You're the one who captured my third and fourth siblings. I originally wanted to spare your life. Now that I know you're not a good person, I don't have to think that much anymore. Do you have any last words? You'd best be saying them as quickly as possible, because this will be the last time you'll speak. What did that kid say? Last words? The kid must have gone mad if he dared to speak to Master Miles like that. Watson stared at Miles and his eyes lit up. That morning, Watson comforted his family after learning about the news of his third and fourth siblings' kidnapping. He then spread his phoenix wings and flew all the way to the nearby manor and asked around for information. Coincidentally, he bumped into Miles having a banquet and thus sneaked in. After observing for some time, he finally got to know what kind of person Miles was. The man was so miserly as though his life depended on it and he squeezed his farmers dry. In addition, he wanted to kill Watson's two siblings too, which ignited the Watson's killing intent. Every human would be triggered by certain things. As a transmigrator, it was inevitable that Watson was lonely in that strange world, but he was fortunate to have a big family by his side, which warmed his heart. His family was his trigger. Anyone who touched it would die. How dare you? Men, take this brat down for me. Miles was so angry that his body was trembling. With a wave of his hand, more than ten guards immediately appeared outside. The guard who had just been knocked down by Watson was the first to walk up with a cold smile. He stretched out his hand and grabbed Watson. How dare you speak to Master like that? I won't go easy on you even if you're just a child. Be good. Crack. A crisp sound rang out. Before the guard could finish his sentence, his lower abdomen was struck in lightning quick manner by a red light. He flew back a few meters and landed heavily on the ground. His eyes were wide open in disbelief as he looked at the flaming wings on the boy's back. Combat aura wings, he's a silver tier powerhouse. Aside from him, the other farmers who carried tables, chairs, and benches were also stunned. Even Miles had his mouth wide open and completely lost for words. Goodness! To think that such a young child was actually a silver tier powerhouse. Miles, get over here and face your death. Watson calmly made a come hither movement. Miles was no longer as arrogant as before, and let out a terrified voice from his throat. Cold sweat dripped down his face while his hands and feet trembled non-stop like a drowning person. Chapter 19, Showing Off His Might Watson stood in the middle of the hall. The surrounding farmers gulped and were afraid of going forward. The boy in front was a silver tier powerhouse, but the strongest guard in the entire farm was only bronze tier. One silver tier warrior was equivalent to dozens of bronze tier warriors. Even if they could not defeat him, he could just fly into the air and escape, since no one was able to stop him. How did Master Miles come to provoke such a terrifying person? Miles was a little surprised too. He had sent people to inquire about the Gary family and all he heard was that the family was a down-and-out baron. He had no idea they had a silver tier warrior, otherwise, he would not have dared to plot a scheme to get the pentacolor fragrant chicken. Deep in his heart, he was angry that his subordinates did not do a good job. However, at this moment, he was already in a risky situation and had no way out. Stop this kid. As long as he's trapped in the hall for a few minutes, everyone's pay be doubled, no, quintupled. Miles gritted his teeth, shouted, and rushed out of the hall's back door in a panic. Things had reached boiling point and Watson would definitely not spare Miles. 
it was better for the latter to enter the dungeon first and use Zeke and Zenoa as hostages in exchange for his own life. If all else failed, he would just die together with Watson. Miles' ruthlessness was precipitated even when death was already near. Quintupled pay. The farmers present were greatly motivated by that. Their initially hesitant gaze turned resolute and they were determined to be brave in order to receive such a huge reward. Miles' order was not to have them defeat Watson, but simply to stop him for a few minutes. Doing so was enough for them to earn half a year's salary, and an opportunity like that would not come again if they missed it. Let's attack together. Let's go all out. A group of people carried tables, chairs and benches, with others holding empty wine bottles. All of them rushed toward Watson. Watson did not panic. Instead, he was itching to give things a try. He spread his phoenix wings, turning the left wing into a red jade shield in front of him. All the tables and chairs that were hurled at him were burned into ashes by his wings' flames before even coming into contact with him. On his right wing, hundreds of feathers turned into sharp swords. They flew out with flames and instantly penetrated through the shoulders or thighs of a group of farmers, leaving holes in them. Before the blood could flow out, the wounds were already charred by the hot temperature. Whoosh! 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 A strong wind blew in the hall. The phoenix wings' feathers shot out and dozens of farmers fell to the ground. They hugged the wounds on their bodies and wailed. In fact, that was the result of Watson's hesitance to kill them, otherwise they would have been dead already. The surrounding walls, including the hard cordierite floor, were also filled with holes and green smoke. Protect Master When the dozen or so guards standing outside the door saw this tragic scene, their eyelids twitched uncontrollably, but they still rushed forward. The one taking the lead was a brawny man covered in a layer of sky-blue combat aura armor. It was three inches thick, and there were water-like waves flowing on the armor. It was none other than water elemental combat aura. The brawny man held a long spear in his hand. It was covered with the same combat aura. The shaft of the spear was like a long dragon. He held it in both hands and spun it like a wheel. The resulting airtight defense repelled the feathers that were shot out from Watson's phoenix wings. Water could extinguish fire. The water element naturally countered the fire element. Although Watson's phoenix wings were covered with the phoenix's sacred fire that not extinguish as easily as ordinary flames, Watson had not mastered combat aura and was not a real silver tier warrior. At that moment, Watson could only withdraw his two phoenix wings and use it as a shield under the attack of more than ten guards led by the bronze tier brawny man. He retreated so far back that he was eventually cornered against the wall. In the process of escaping, Miles looked back and saw that Watson had been forced to retreat. His flustered mood eased slightly, and he sneered, You gave me a scare. Turns out a silver tier powerhouse isn't that powerful. I was worried for nothing. I reckon that this child has only just entered silver tier and doesn't have much combat experience. Alan, if you get rid of this kid, you'll get ten times your pay. If you capture him, I'll give you twenty times your pay, plus ten pentacolor fragrant chicken eggs. After leaving those words, Miles pushed open the back door in a relaxed manner and ran out. Alan, whose name Miles called out, was the leader of the farm guards and a bronze tier warrior. He was very proficient with his long spear and was a one of the rare skilled individuals among bronze tier warriors. Yes, master. The eyes of the brawny Alan lit up. Twenty times the pay was indeed tempting, but what attracted him even more was ten pentacolor fragrant chicken eggs. He was forty years old that year, and should nothing untoward happen to him, he would stop at bronze tier for the rest of his life. However, things had changed. He had heard of the pentacolor fragrant chicken's effects, where one egg could increase his strength by one hundred caddies and ten eggs would equal to one thousand caddos. If he was lucky, he might be able to break through to Silver Tear after eating it. In addition, after fighting with Watson, he realized that the child did not have the strength of a Silver Tear warrior despite possessing a frighteningly strong ability. The boy was only bronze rank and slightly weaker than him. 
It seems that the news of Master's findings about the the pentacolor fragrant chicken is true. I reckon that this young man must have eaten a lot of pentacolor fragrant chicken eggs to have such strength. If I can eat the same number of eggs. When Alan thought of this, his heart was filled with eagerness and he tightened his grip on the long spear in his hand. When I have the chance, I'll have to ask Big Brother about the cultivation method of combat aura. Watson thought to himself. The phoenix wings only looked like combat aura wings, but it would all be exposed if he really engaged in a fight. As expected of a bronze tier strong men. I really can't win if I don't fight with all my might. All I want to do is deal with Miles and you guys should all retreat. Hand to hand combat is not my forte. Don't throw your lives away for nothing. Watson knew exactly what he lacked after experiencing that battle. He had eaten dozens of pentacolor fragrant chicken eggs, and he had at least 2,000 pounds of strength. An average bronze tier powerhouse was still inferior to him, but what he lacked most was battle experience. Oh? You're not good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. What are you good at? Could it be running away? You're just a little brat. You can't even beat our captain, yet you still dare to boast shamelessly. Seeing that Watson was speaking in a mature manner even though he was obviously a kid, the dozen or so guards felt that it was strange, and some of them even teased him. In their opinion, Watson was no match for them, prompting them to make snide remarks at him. You'll soon know what I'm good at. Watson's expression was calm. Silver tear spell, water elemental warrior summoning. Opening his arms, Watson chanted a low and tactful incantation. A moment later, he looked up at the ceiling above him. I wonder if this house is sturdy. Crack. Just as he had this question, a muffled thunder sounded above his head. A crack appeared on the ceiling, then the crack expanded and the entire ceiling collapsed. Dozens of water pillars fell from the sky, turning into dozens of blue water elemental soldiers holding long spears. With a sweep of their long weapons, more than ten iron tier guards were sent flying and cracks appeared on their armor. Was that, magic? Rubbing their aching bodies, the guards raised their heads in panic. What they saw surprised them even more. A water elemental warrior was fighting Alan. Their spears intersected, but they were not at a disadvantage. Then, another water elemental warrior stepped forward, commencing a pincer attack on Alan from the front and back. Two spears were crossed at Alan's neck, forcing him to kneel on the ground. His face turned red and the spear in his hands fell powerlessly. There were dozens of such soldiers, guarding Watson from the front and moving forward in an orderly formation. Boom! The heavy footsteps caused the hall to shake. A summoned creature had strength that was superior to Alan's. What level of magic was that? Could it be? This is silver tier magic. Someone cried out in surprise. Fear and despair swept through everyone's hearts. Not only was the boy a silver tier warrior, but a silver tier mage too. How could anyone defend against him? Was he even human? At this moment, everyone understood that Watson was not bluffing. He had duly cultivated magic and martial arts, both of which were silver tier. Watson was clearly only a ten year old child and such talent was absolutely monstrous. Watson's thin and small body stood where he was, but the huge mountain-like pressure bore down on their hearts and made them lose their will to fight. They would not dare to make a move even if they were offered a hundred times their wages, let alone when it was only ten times the amount. As wonderful as gold coins were, money was not as important as their lives. Chapter 20, Fusing Magical Beasts why is there a dark cloud hovering in the sky? Miles had already left the hall. As he stood at the entrance of the dungeon, he looked back and discovered that the sky above the manor was shrouded in a layer of dark clouds. A thick pillar of water fell from the sky and smashed through the roof, causing the corners of his lips to twitch. F asterisk CK, is this Alan's doing? Do you know how much it would cost me to repair the house? I told him to kill not to demolish the house. As far as he knew, the only person in the farm who was proficient in water elemental combat aura was Alan. 
However, with such a big commotion, could it be that Alan had broken through to Silvertear? That thought left Miles feeling a little sour yet happy at the same time. If Alan had broken through to Silver Rank, capturing that detestable brat was all but certain with the help of the other guards inside the manor. Miles began to slow his pace as he walked to the dungeon. I'll definitely torture him when I catch him. Miles snorted coldly. If Alan really advanced to Silver Tear, the ever stingy Miles would not deduct his wages. After all, Silver Rank warriors were very scarce, and he could just chalk that debt to Watson. Without Watson in the way, no one would be able to stop him from snatching the Pentacolor fragrant chicken. Miles could foresee that he could expand his farm several times in a few years and become the largest farm around the area in one fell swoop. His head felt hot, and a young voice came from behind him before Miles could finish daydreaming. Sorry pal, you don't stand a chance. Miles turned around and found Watson standing calmly behind him with his arms crossed over his shoulders. Behind Watson was an army formed by dozens of water elemental warriors. Each water elemental warrior was holding a guard or farmer in their hands. They stared at him with a terrified expression. Alan was among those being held and he had a sullen gaze. How could this be? What have all of you been doing? You can't even stop a child for a few minutes? What a bunch of useless people. What did I do to get a bunch of useless subordinates like you? The guards who were reprimanded by Miles lowered their heads. Their pain was beyond words. What could they do? Watson was a silver tier warrior and mage. How could they stop such a monster? If Miles could stop him, then be all means, go ahead. Miles was so angry that his expression turned livid. His handlebar mustache trembled non-stop. He wanted to say something, but Watson had already walked up to him with a cold expression. You talk too much nonsense. Miles felt a chill run up his spine when Watson's sky-blue eyes swept across him. His legs went soft and he subconsciously sat down on the ground. Miles felt that there was an ocean in the child's eyes when he first saw Watson, but that ocean had since frozen into ice. His expression changed a few times. Miles forced out a smile, misunderstanding, it's all a misunderstanding. Young man, let's talk things out. The people you're looking for are in the dungeon. I'll let them out later and pay you 500 gold coins. Let's just forget about this matter. I was impulsive when I kidnapped them. I've thought it through now. I did nothing to your two brothers, and as the saying goes, more friends lead to more opportunities. What do you think? He had to bow his head under such a towering figure. Watson looked down at Miles with a pitiful expression before turning around to leave. Miles was stung by the look in his eyes. He clenched his fists tightly but was secretly happy. After all, Watson was a child who was easy to fool. The saying more friends lead to more opportunities did not ring true in that world. More often than not, it was survival of the fittest. As long as there was enmity, it would be irresponsible of Miles not to eliminate the root of the problem. He had already decided that when Watson left, he would spend a lot of money to hire assassins, and if that was not possible, he would buy poison and poison the water source near Watson's home. Killing a person required the use of as many methods as possible. At that moment, Miles noticed that Watson had his back to him and raised his right hand. Opposite him, a water elemental warrior raised the long spear in his hand. What was Watson trying to do? A bad feeling appeared in Miles' heart. Before he could open his mouth to scream, he saw the long spear turn into a blue stream of light and surge toward him, piercing through his chest. He lowered his head to look at the big hole in his chest that was bleeding profusely, then fell into eternal darkness. That day was destined to be a big day for Miles Manor. Everyone was still drinking and in high spirits. A moment ago, but in the blink of an eye, Miles was dead and no one bothered to bury his body. In the hall that was riddled with holes, Watson sat where Miles used to be. In front of him, more than ten guards, led by Alan, stood respectfully. Dozens of farmers were lying on the ground, bandaging their wounds. They did not even dare to breathe. 
Miles was the culprit in this incident. You guys are only accomplices, at most. I won't make things too difficult for you. Hand over your valuables and get lost. Watson waved his hand. He did not intend to kill all those people. Killing Miles sufficed to make an example for the others. He believed that those people would spread news of Miles' death to the nearby areas after being allowed to leave. The purpose of doing that was so anyone who knew about his pentacolor fragrant chicken would not dare to scheme and plot against him. We understand. Everyone sighed. Although Watson's little man look was a little strange, no one was surprised by it. What could be more surprising than becoming a platinum-level warrior and a mage at the same time? Under Watson's orders, the farmers present took out the few silver coins that they had on them. Some of the more clever guards brought out all the valuables from the manor. In a moment, a hundred sets of armor and weapons appeared in front of Watson, along with more than three hundred gold coins and some jewelry. They were altogether worth about five hundred gold coins. The ninety over pentacolor fragrant chicken eggs that Miles had snatched earlier had not yet been eaten and were also brought out. Lord Watson, this is half of the property in the manor, Alan said. His legs still felt a little weak when he thought of how Watson had raised his hand to summon the water elemental warriors and nearly tore down the house. Half of the property. Watson was admiring the spoils of war thinking about what grade of equipment he would be able to obtain after fusing the armor and swords together. When he heard this, his eyebrows raised. Where is the remaining half? Master Miles was originally in the magical beast business. The remaining half of the property is not money, but magical beasts, Alan replied. Bring me to take a look at them. Watson's eyes lit up, and he gestured for Alan to lead the way. Soon they arrived at a breeding farm behind the manor. The breeding farm was divided into two parts. On the left, there were more than a hundred lion-like magical beasts walking around. Their bodies were covered in fire-like fur. On the right were a same number of tigers, and they had joints which were covered in rock-shaped armor. Watson recognized these two types of magical beasts. They were the feral lion and the rock-armored tiger both of which were iron-tier magical beasts. Magical beasts could be likened to the cultivators among wild beasts. Watson had been in that world for so long, but it was the first time he had seen such a magical beast. To powerful cultivators, magical beasts could be used to guard their homes or as mounts. To double a cultivator's strength. Many manors did the same and cultivated the land while raising magical beasts. They used magical beast feces to nourish the land, and it was a win-win situation. The Watson family had done the same thing, but they could not afford to raise magical beasts, so they could only choose to raise hens. While Watson was admiring the magical beasts, a strong feral lion and a rock-armored tiger ran over the fence and escaped from the breeding farm. Both beasts roared at Watson and were the two dominant individuals of that territory. Magical beasts are inherently wild and recognize strangers. They're more ferocious to people who they have never seen before, Alan explained from the side. He was afraid that Watson would kill the two magical beasts in a fit of anger. An adult iron tier magical beast could be sold for dozens of silver coins, and all those beasts there were valuable. More ferocious? It did not matter. They would be obedient after being fused. Watson glanced at the two magical beasts and immediately activated the fusion. The feral lion and rock-armored tiger instantly turned into rays of light and collided. Their bodies expanded by more than twice, turning into a five-meter long, nearly three-meter high giant magical beast with two heads, a lion and a tiger. After doing all that, Watson turned his head and asked, Are these the only magical beasts in the manor? Yes, yes. Alan's mouth was dry and his tongue was parched. He was sweating profusely. What was going on? Was he dreaming? Why were the two magical beasts in front of him fusing together? What kind of magic was that? It was too terrifying. Alan was lost for words even though he had wanted to warn Watson to be careful.